and first to the US, where businesses regard faster payments as a must-have service, according to a recent Federal uh, Reserve survey, uh, which found out that three out of four firms consider it important to offer faster payments. Some 90% of businesses now expect to be able to make and receive faster payments within the next three years. The Federal Reserve's role in advancing the nationwide reach of instant payments is especially important as the COVID-19 pandemic dramatically increases digital payments adoption and demand for more flexible cash management in the United States. We're joined now from San Francisco by Mark Gould, a chief payments executive at the Federal Reserve, who can draw on his 30 years experience in the payments at US Central Bank. And it is wonderful to have you here on Cybos TV, Mark. Now, it's been a challenging couple of years, to say the least. So what are the important lessons that the payment industry need to learn from the pandemic? Well, thanks for having me, and it's great to be here. I, I think, you know, first and foremost, one thing that we've learned from the pandemic is how resilient this industry really is. Uh, and it's confirmed the fact that we can move faster and be more agile than even we may have thought possible. I think another important lesson is just uh, confirming the resilience of the payment system. Um, you know, speaking uh, from the Federal Reserve's perspective, we set daily records in the ACH business and the funds transfer business and in cash that the pandemic really challenged us. It, it in some ways bent but didn't break the system. Uh, and that's thanks to many years of prior investments, not just here at the Fed, but throughout the industry. I think another thing that we've learned and that we've seen is the rapid uptake in digital payment adoption and new ways of shopping was really fueled by earlier innovations in the payment system. These weren't innovations that happened during the pandemic. They were things that were leveraged during the pandemic. So that's something that we should really be mindful of and thoughtful about as we contemplate our current investment strategy and what it might mean for the future. OK, so those were the lessons learned. But what were the pain points uncovered by the pandemic? Well, we could probably spend an entire day talking about pain points. I might highlight one that's received maybe just a little bit media, a little bit less media attention, and that's uh, the the fact that the payment system is not immune from supply chain challenges. And we've seen this most uh, most obviously in our cash business. Yeah, you know, the the cash business is used to seeing demand spikes around natural disasters, geopolitical events, and things like that. We're not used to seeing sustained dramatic spikes in demand uh, that, that last months or even years. And that's what we've experienced in the cash business during uh, the entire length of the pandemic to date. Even more importantly, on the coin side of our business, when the economy shut down, people stopped going to stores, store, retailers stopped going to banks, banks stopped coming to us. The coin circulation uh, in the United States basically just stopped. And that's a, a situation that we're still working our way uh, out of. I think that the final thing that I might just highlight is the, the, the dramatic need for focus on financial inclusion. Um, a lot of people are still relying on cash. And even you know, many of the electronic payment mechanisms that, that exist, uh, not all Americans have full access to. And so as we contemplate the future and technology innovations, we need to be sustained, we need to maintain sustained focus on financial inclusion. Uh, talking about the future, Mark, uh, we, we mentioned that survey before. Three out of four firms consider it important to offer faster payments. 90% uh, expect faster payments within the next three years. So tell us what the Federal Reserve are doing to support the uh, adoption of instant payments. Well, that research is a great example of one thing that we're doing is, is really trying to build awareness. Another thing that we've learned through our research uh, is that many financial institutions, particularly the small and medium-sized financial institutions in the United States, really need more information. They need more information about faster payments, how instant payments work, and, and how they should be working with their outsourced service providers to prepare. Um, so we're doing a lot of work in this space, and later in 2021, we'll be launching an education effort um, to help ecosystem providers, as we think of them, the, the suppliers to the financial community, helping them prepare for the onset of instant payments um, and be prepared to fully leverage them. You know, within the Fed system, obviously, we are quite focused on the, uh, the build of FedNow and preparing for uh, FedNow's market entry in 2023, um, working both with our internal teams and also with our early pilot banks to, uh, to prepare for smooth market entry. We're super excited for FedNow to come to market and eager to share what we've built uh, with the rest of the world.
But, Mark, whenever you talk about faster instant payments, invariably you can't avoid the issue of security. So what are the main concerns you have about payment security these days? What is it that's really giving you sleepless nights, so to speak? <laughs> well, um, uh, another topic we could spend a lot of time on, but I'll just say we should just always be mindful of the fact that as we increase the speed of payments and as we uh, create new ways of making payments, we are creating new pathways for fraudsters. That's just the, the simple fact of the of the game. Um, and so fraud is an industry-wide effort, uh, an industry-wide issue that's going to require industry-wide effort to resolve. You know, one of the things that we're really doing is, is trying to help the industry by developing a, a common vernacular for fraud, uh, because what we found is that not everyone describes the same types of fraudulent events the same way. And that impedes information sharing within the financial institution uh, uh, community. So uh, publishing research on you know, new things like synth synthetic identity fraud, which is a, a rising uh, a type of fraud, uh, remote authentication fraud, uh, new research is being published uh, regularly, um, and trying to help the industry find common language uh, and common uh, ways of solving fraud going forward. And finally, and briefly, Mark, if we can, if we can touch on inclusion. What's the payments industry doing to improve financial inclusion over there in the States? Well, I think fundamentally the U.S. payment system needs to work for everyone. Um, and so one of the things that we're doing, we're working with the U.S. Faster Payments Council and their financial inclusion work group. Also, there's just been a new committee stood up in the Atlanta Reserve Bank focused on financial inclusion trying to think of a safe, efficient, and inclusive ways of making payments for all Americans. Uh, finally, I'd acknowledge the rising role of fintechs uh, in breaking down barriers to financial in institution, partnering with financial institutions. OK, we're going to have to leave it there. But Mark Gould, thank you so much. Mark, of course, is the chief payments executive at the Federal Reserve.